Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Any Making 2 and today I'm going to be giving you Part 2 of what if Naruto was a Uchiha that created his own village Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform And also guys Don't forget to go ahead and check out the other channels if you're new Yes, I indeed have four more which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. Links will be down below in the description so go ahead and destroy that red subscribe button and become a part of the end making family. And if you want your what if to be done by me, just go ahead and comment your idea and have a chance for it to be done by me guys. So yeah, without further ado, or wasting any more time, what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode? Begin the intro. the last time we left off a meeting was taking place it was a meeting at the hidden leaf village Kanoha. they had a lot to discuss for one thing the village was rising their people were being seen more often a village that consists of the remaining members of the uchiyas and also the uzumaki clan as well it turns out that Majority of the Uzumaki members had fled underground and they had survived over the years. They had hid themselves from society, using their seals to keep themselves protected. They had went completely off the grid. For years now, no one knew that they had survived, but they had. And they kept themselves in complete seclusion, away from the populace. That was until the Uchiha clan got attacked. Hiruzen was one of the few that knew who did this. Danzo, the Uchiha was plotting a coup. However, in a rare moment of guilt, Itachi broke down as he spoke to someone that he respected, someone that could help him other than the Hokage or Danzo. He spoke to Naruto Uchiha. Naruto Uchiha was the grandson of Madar Uchiha. He's had a eventful life, let's just put it at that. His father never really hear much for him. His wife. His wife was a Senju and there was complications. However, she went through with it to make sure that Naruto was born and she died right after. His father had resented him because of that. The man had eventually got himself killed in battle. Something that he got obsessed with. And Naruto was born, raised within the clan. There was a lot of stigma because he was the grandson of Madara, but he rise above that. He rise above it all. So as for Hiruzen, he was talking about the complications of war starting. The moment these two clans rear their head once again, the other nations would not stand for it. The ones who went to war with them in the past, such as the Stone, Kiri and Kumo. Yes, it was becoming rather problematic. Skipping to Kumo, the Raikage was paranoid as he also heard about the rumors as well. And this could be bad if they decide to turn their wrath against them. Many of them knew of Naruto's father and they knew of Naruto as well. As he gained that rootlessness that his father had. And many years has passed so they did not knew the full extension of his strength. But if there was one thing they could count on. The grandson of Madara Uchiha would be a fearsome foe. The Tishukage was more paranoid even than the Raikage, believing that they would strike against him and his village. However, the problem was he could not find them. But they had to. He had to find them and stop them before they come after him. 
he would not allow them to do what was done to them all those years ago. He refused to let that happen to his village. We then skipped to Kire, where Mei Terume was, the leader of the rebellion forces. It has been some time now since she was contacted by this group. Only people that she has seen was a liaison between them. She's never actually met the actual leader of this new village. She's never seen him before. She heard many things about him though, in the past before he had fled Kanoha. She heard how powerful he was. She heard that he was just as powerful as his grandfather by now. And his grandfather was a very dangerous and deadly individual. Not only was he a Uchiha, but it is said that he was also a Senju with the Mokidon. Those collaborations and combined together would be a force to be reckoned with. The whole world will be at an end right now. However, he had offered to help her win the war as she couldn't wait to meet him herself for a man like himself to be able to build up everything from so little and reach this height of a level she was truly interested to meet him skipping towards the unknown area behind a veil the massive village the new village resides it wasn't just Uzumaki's and Uchiha's there was many missing names many people that fled their own village after being screened by the selection community they were entered within the village. Over the years, such village as the land of now spring and many others had joined forces with them. While the rest of the world did not see them, they were moving in shadows. We then came across Mito Uzumaki. Naruto had brought her here. Kushina had been like a second mother to him, her and Mikato. They saw the way that he was treated and they were there for him. In fact, it was Kushina's death that extended Naruto eyes to the next level and made him more ruthless and powerful and he had refused to leave her child behind. She did not deserve to be put through all of that. Minto had taken to Naruto like an older brother because he was always there for her. So when the opportunity came she accepted. Both her and Sasuke Uchiha was going at it, clashing against one another as they had grown exponentially stronger. Sasuke was older as both of them were 14 years old by now. Sasuke was a few months older than her though. We then skipped towards the main tower where Naruto resided. As he was finally shown, he had his mother eyes, his father here, and there was a slash in his face. It started near to his nose going down to his cheek. He had received it a long time ago from his father. As said earlier, his father was not a good man in the slightest. Two people came in. One of them was Itachi Uchiha, the other one was at Uzumaki. Her name was Urza Uzumaki. She was actually the first Uzumaki that he came across and he was rather shocked. He was able to befriend her and the both of them spoke. The both of them understood as Naruto was seeing the downfall of his clan very soon because of what was coming. But right now Naruto was the Kinokage, a representation of both of the clans merging together. They were no longer two individuals. They were coming together as one strong village. Both Itachi and Urza were shocked when they heard that Naruto would be going himself. However, yes, he would be going, selecting a group to go with him. These two were like his main advisors, as he trusted these two a lot. As for the name, they were known as the Uzushi Nation. Yes, the Uzushi Nation was coming back to reality, opening their borders dropping their seals it was time the world knew that they were here and they were no longer hiding away from them skipping towards the masked man who had caused chaos that night on kanoha he was able to go toe to toe with the fort okage because of his very powerful ability and yet he seen root as a monster they had met before in the past and right now he knew not to try anything stupid with that man. Despite how powerful his Sharingan was, despite how powerful his ability was, he knew that Naruto was a monster amongst monsters and he feared him. So yeah guys, the basic last we left off, you guys can switch across the place to for yourself and also don't forget to go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the Enmaking making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support and without further ado, what do you say we jump right into this begin? 
Now guys, we begin this new episode with Naruto. He was sitting respectfully in front of two individuals. They were both Uzumakis. They were the elders, the oldest members remaining of their clan. While there were many other older ones, these two preceded all of them. Their age was showing. Given how the Uzumaki longevity can last for a very long while, it just shows how old they were getting in age. However, they didn't look that bad. The man on the left, his name was Kaido, while the woman on the right, her name was Hina. Naruto stood in front of them. He respected these two with a great amount, as they were currently in the middle of a discussion. Kaido was the one to speak. Despite the time that has passed, I can still remember the joint attack that they use with the collaboration of their own people against us. However, despite the hate that has festered in our people for years now, you were able to get us to see beyond that. Yes, he's right. Hina said, while the stone and Kumo can never be trusted, you have shown us that there is a difference with this new leadership of Kiri. And despite if any of us has any past aggression, we have 100% trust in your decision moving forward. Hina said, thank you, said Naruto. He was respectful to the both of them. These two, as he had said before, joining the two clans together was hard at first. Many, many did not even respect or like Naruto that much. After all, the Uzumakis and Uchiyas were never truly bonded in the past. However, these two saw something inside of him, something that would make for a wonderful leader. They gave him their 100% backing after just a few conversations with him. If it wasn't for them, maybe this whole thing would have never come together. Yes, Naruto was able to turn the people and bring them together even more, but these two started it by giving him a hand, and for that he would always respect them. And now, things are greater than ever. Kaido spoke up. We both can see the friendly hand that this May Terumi is putting forward. You said that she's offering to give us the three tails. Yes, said Naruto. She know that once this is over, if there is any other Jinjulikis created from the three tail, they will have a stigma on them because of the aggression of the Mizukagi. And she know, despite everything, despite how much she could try to fix it, the pain would not go away. The Mizukage Yagura has slaughtered so many people in his conquest of getting rid of the bloodline users. Anything connected to him would just bring chaos. So she's doing this to both help her village and also build a friend in hand of trust with us. And all she's asking in return is our help to stop Yagura after this is finished. We can go further into this relationship of migrating between our villages and communicating between each other and gaining a better respect and a bond in between us as allies. Well, that is happy to hear. Hina said she was smiling. After all these years, after all the pain that her and her people has went through, it was wonderful to see now that they were coming back out. Things were going their way. She knew that many other nations would be against this. She knew that they would try to put them back down. However, she did not fear their village of being destroyed ever again. She did not fear her people of being slaughtered. Over the past couple of years, a lot of inventions, a lot of productivity has pushed their people and their whole civilization and way of living forward with the connections that they build between themselves and the several other villages. She was sure. And with this man, Naruto Uchiha at the front of it all, she did not doubt about their future. Time skip. It was evening as Naruto was walking through the streets. 
Many people wave and smile at him as he returned their waves and smile with ones of his own. Beside him was Mito. As the both of them were conversing amongst one another, so how long will you be gone for she asks. At the max, it will be two or three weeks to iron things out, Naruto said. And no, I can't take you with me. Mito pouted. However, she understood. Things are different now. In the beginning, Naruto was always there. He had established himself as her older brother to keep her safe and protected. However, despite his responsibilities, despite how much he had on his shoulder, he was still there for her. Yes, sometime he might be late, sometime he might not show up. However, he had always come back to make sure that she was okay. Something she would be forever grateful for. But she loved her new life here. She had friends, family, people that love and care for her. And she would not ask for anything else. So she said, with this new change, and when we open the village up, does this mean we'll finally get to be ninjas? Well, if you wouldn't, the whole past years of you training in the academy with the other students would be a waste, wouldn't it? Said Naruto with a smile. Mito was excited. She has been training hard for the past few years. Her skills had been evaluated several times over. She had been training in the art of ninjutsu, taijutsu, fuinjutsu, even genjutsu as well. After the nine tail was taken out of her, her chakra was exponentially easier to control. Something that she was truly grateful for and that was helping her reach greater heights. Some of the older ninjas here were allowed to go out on missions. However, the younger ones were not. They were just given missions in the village. Nothing really too excited. So she was glad that she would finally be placed on a team to actually go on actual missions. That's gonna be awesome. As she and Naruto walk and they talk. Time skip. Itachi Uchiha was lying in bed. His gaze was fixated on the ceiling. He was not really looking at anything. His mind was occupied though, with a lot of thoughts as he lay there in bed, thinking about a lot. When the bathroom door opened, walking in in a nightgown was Izumi Uchiha. She had long brown hair and dark full eyes as she crawled into bed right beside him. What's on your mind, she said. Just thinking about our trip. To Kiri, he said to her. Are you worried? She asked him. Well, if you're not worried, at least slightly. Something must be wrong with you, said Itachi. However, I know that it will all work out, he said. Of course it will. For one, you're going. And Naruto is also going as well. The Mizukagi might be strong. But there is no way that he stand a chance against you guys. Itachi did not respond to that. As it was not really a question. I was wondering though. After this is over. After. We open everything up to the public. The moment they find out. They're going to attack aren't they? Even if they are Itachi said. There is no way that they can get close without us being notified. And I'm sure they're not just going to rush into anything. There will be a lot of hate though and a lot of paranoia but just maybe there is a slight chance that we can go through this without bloodshed. She looked right into his eyes as he turned to face her. I hope you're right she said. As she leaned in and gave him a kiss, sharing a soft, gentle kiss between one another. She had had a crush on him since they were younger. It was since coming here and moving forward in their life. They were able to finally talk and they start to move forward in a relationship. Something that Itachi was grateful that he pursued because it has been nothing but wonderful. Time skip. Urza walked towards where Naruto was sitting. As they were currently on a boat, 
heading towards the land of water so they could finally lend a hand to end the civil war that has been plaguing Kiri for years now. Walking her way up towards Naruto was Urza. As she sat next to him, you know, it's strange, she said. Given all the years that we spent together, given all the years that I've known you for, I've never seen you actually fought. As Naruto raised the eyebrow at that, of course you have, he said, on numerous occasions. That is not what I'm talking about, and you know it. I have seen the capability of Itachi, and when the question is brought up about the boat of your strengths, he doesn't seem to have any chance of beating you. He had said that himself, and yet, Itachi power is great, greater than most, and yet, he doesn't believe that he holds a candle to you. What are you implying, said Naruto. She shrugged. I think if the both of us fought, I can take you, she said. Naruto smiled. I'm sure that you can, he said. The both of them had been friends ever since they met that day. They both wanted the same thing, just the betterment of their people. They were able to bond through that. Right now they were heading towards Kiri, and they were going to be working on the battlefield together, but they were not alone. Itachi was on the boat, and a few other Uchiha's and Uzumaki's as well. The ones that Naruto believed would be great in ending the civil war once and for all. Healers, Fuinjutsu Masters, Genjutsu Masters. Naruto was dressed in a black uniform. It seemed to be all black. However, it had red trimmings going across the chest of his shirt and going down the side of his pants. Trimming seemed to have Fuinjutsu markers inside each of them, sealing tags to be quite exact. He also had two swords strapped to his back and the crest of their village right on the side of his chest while the others were wearing headbands either on their forehead or their neck or some on their shoulder, their bicep. Urza was correct, she's never seen Ruta fought at his fullest ever. She's never seen him tap into the true might. The true might that had shown several dozen people over the years. Why he's someone to be feared. Why he's lived up to the representation of his grandfather, Uchiha Madara. But maybe she will get to see it very soon. Time skip. Walking through the mist was none other than Zabuza Mamakai. As he was alone. Making his way towards rendezvous point, he was told that today would be the day when their help arrived from the special village, Uzuchi. He was closely connected with the Mizukagi. That is why he even had such information, given the fact that most people weren't even aware of the name, except for their allies. Well, that was a good thing. Zabuza had met Itachi Uchiha before and two other Uzumakis as well. Zabuza was hired by Gato a few years back in order for him to kill the bridge builder of the Land of Wave and seclude the nation for himself. That is what Gato would desire. However, there was a deal that was struck between Ruto and the people of the Land of Wave. Zabuza Mamakai had the bad luck of facing off against Itachi Uchiha and his two Uzumaki companions. He lost. There was no question there he lost. However, his life was spared. And Itachi did something that truly surprised him. He offered him and his partner help instead of killing them. The bond between Meitarumi and Naruto messengers who were sending message back to him had already started. So it was not hard to reconnect the both of them. Zabuza had fled after his fail assassination on the Mizukagi and he ran away after that. Mei had been pissed off when he finally returned as she had been searching for him and a few others who had fled as well, including the six steel Jinjuliki as well. Truly, 
It was a painful night for Zabuza. He had known me for a long time, knowing how feisty and pissed off she could be. However, since then, him and Haku were able to join the rebellion forces and it was because of Itachi. At first he thought Itachi was the one in charge but that was not the case. He knew, at least he heard rumors. He's never seen this Naruto Uchiha before but he's heard some things that made him knew that if Itachi was that strong, that man was a monster and he wanted to meet the man himself. Unfortunately though, he doubted that the leader himself would come here in order to take part in this. However, with enough force, they should be able to end this once and for all. And a good relationship was building between them and this new nation. Zabuza knew that it will cause a lot of problems but May seemed to understand the backlash and what will occur. But she also understand the support that she was being given and how this was going to benefit the both of them greatly. Zabuza finally arrived as he saw the ship was coming to a dock. Every single member that worked on that ship was a part of their forces. They had used this secret area to get their things out and move around. However, it has become more and more difficult. That is why they need to do this now. They need to end this now. They couldn't afford for it to drag on any longer or they might lose. They were getting weaker as Yagra realized that he could outlast them in terms of resources and he's been scanning the ports to make sure that they weren't moving. However, they were always able to find a secret way to get through. But it was getting smaller and smaller. So he hoped they could end this once and for all. If not, he would die trying. Zabuza watched as the people duck as he saw the several Uzumakis. He knew about their Fuinjutsu art. So the numbers, you should not worry about that. He then noticed Itachi came off. Followed by at least four more Uchiyas. He could tell. And there was also a few more ninjas that were neither Uzumakis or Uchiyas. There was just three of them though. Each of them seemed to be a weapon expert. Judging by the unusual blade. Zabuza knew those blades but... They were incredibly hard to wield. So these people must be a good weapon expert. There was no doubt about that. Zabuza made his way forward. Itachi seemed happy to see him. As he extended a hand. Zabuza took said hand. Itachi he said. It's good to see you again. Yes. It's good to see you as well. Itachi said. He remembers spearing Zabuza life. Back then. He saw something within a man's eyes. That he wanted more. And he wanted to know the full truth after hearing it. The both of them were able to create a helping hand for each other. And he was able to quickly realign him back with his own village. And now he was here alive. How's Haku? Itachi asks. Well I won't tell you that everything has been good. Because you know this situation. But we've been holding on. Let's just hope that we can end this once and for all. Zabuza said. Yes. Let's hope we can. So this is a famous Zabuza Mamakai, huh? Zabuza was startled. As he felt a shiver went down his spine. Someone was able to sneak up on him. He felt nothing. Absolutely nothing. It was like no one was there until he spoke. As he finally turned. One look into those eyes and Zabuza could tell that this was him. He had no idea why he was here but there was no doubt in his mind. This was him. This was their leader. Zabuza looked down towards the hand that was in front of him. He reached out and took it. The man was not releasing any killer intent nor was he trying to be hostile but Zabuza felt this feeling of fear. There was no doubt about it. This was the Red Dragon, otherwise known as Naruto Uchiha or the grandson of Madara Uchiha. There was no doubt in his mind. As the both of them shook hands, Zabuza was still feeling that offsetting feeling. 
You're him, aren't you? Him, said Naruto. The one they call Naruto Uchiha. A.K.A. the Red Dragon. I see you heard of me. Tuh. Who hasn't, Zabuza said. I'm surprised that you're here yourself. I never thought you would show. Well, what can I say? In order to show that we're both together with this one. I have to put my best foot forward, he said to him. Zabuza didn't know why, but he felt uneasy. Granted, the individual that stood in front of him meant him no harm but yet it was just an unpleasant feeling standing in front of this person he could feel no chakra no killer intent but it was just strangely intimidating he felt as much as he hated to say it afraid now he understood why the mere mention of Madara Uchiha name put fear in people if this was his legacy he did not doubt it in the slightest. Well then, I think we should get moving, said Naruto. Zabuza nodded. Time skip. Meitarumi was waiting to see the company that was sent. She has met Itachi Uchiha before. She believed that he would be one of them that was going to come here. With enough Uchiha's and Uzumaki's, they should be able to handle Yagra with ease. She just had to convince the others to stop fighting. As much as they were on his side, she did not want to cut Kira population down to nothing. She wanted to convince them to stop this, to put an end to it, and finally rejoin. However, she knew that some would not go with what she was saying. Some would still have to fight. Some would still want to fight. Some will not be able to be saved by her. But she will do her darnest to make sure. That her village does not suffer too badly after this. They have been suffering for too long. It's time they enjoy themselves as a whole. Someone arrived inside. It was her second in command, Ayo. Ayo had a surprised look on his face. Ayo, what is it? He's here, Ayo said. Who, Itachi? No, the leader. He arrived himself. Me blinked in surprise. He came, she said. She was rather surprised to hear that. Ayo nodded. He wished to have an audience with you. Me straighten up. Send him in, she said. And I wish to speak with him alone. Ayo understood that he should not get involved. Slowly but surely, after a few seconds, someone approached. She could feel his footsteps arriving closer and closer. She heard about him, but this was the first time that she was going to see him. She seen photos, but those were when he was much, much younger, scaring the living daylight out of many. Many knew that he was next to take over the position that his grandfather once held as one of the most dangerous men to ever walk this earth. His father had tried to reach that. However, his father was more just a bloody killer instead of trying to be all-powerful, a ruthless man who did not spear his enemies or spear anyone to be questioned. Their names that were given over the years always have something with dragon. His father was known as the Bloody Dragon and many more and he was known as the Red Dragon. She believed it was because of his unusual flames. And for the first time, she was seeing him at this age. The both of them were close to each other in age, extremely so. He entered the room. The first thing she noticed was the scar on his face. It had been in the photo as well. However, it did not take away from his overall features. She had to say, he was one of the most handsome men that she's ever come across. Dark, captivating eyes is here, gently resting. Near the side of his face, those two bangs, the others spiking backwards. His face was completely perfect. And the scar made him look just more hot. However, this was not time for that. She got up as Naruto stepped forward. They started with a handshake. She was the first to speak. I must say, 
this is truly a surprise. Of all the people I expected to see, you are not one of them, she said. As she gestured for him to sit down, well, said Naruto, so far, this relationship has been built on trust. Relationship, she said. Yes, of course, said Naruto. It is what is going on between the both of us. May gave off a smile hearing that. Is that so, she said. So, what were you saying about this relationship, she asked. Well, I'm saying that it's built on trust. And what better way for I to show you that you can trust me by coming here myself. He said to her, well, you're right about that. Not many leaders would show up themselves, even after sending a group. I guess you're correct, she said. This must be a sign of trust. And over the few years that we've connected with one another, despite never talking face to face, you've been nothing but helpful in my endeavor. And you are also assured of my returning expectations for all your help, she said to him. Well, I wouldn't be here if I did not. Believe that I can trust you, said Naruto. You have been most accommodating to my people who have been here. And I'm sure they have done the same to you. Of course, she said to him. They have been nothing but helpful. And I'm grateful for all the help that you're giving us. Given the past between the Uzumakis and this nation. Not to mention, you were once a part of Kanoha. The past is no more, Naruto said. While it does build us up, we have to make the future the goal, he said. Yes, I suppose you're right, she said to him. Given the allegation that resurfaced from the other villages and the background of my village as well, it will also befall upon you as well. The moment everything is made public, May glanced towards him as her face turned serious. I understand the repercussions and I understand what it has to take in order for us to achieve what we desire, she said. The past has not been kind, nor has the other villages. However, I was not in charge in the past. Things are different now and I seek to build a better future. I presume the same of you. Given the aggressions that many of your people has released and stepped forward with a friendly hand. Yes, said Naruto. The villages shall be the same but the leaders can change. And with the changing of the leaders, that is when new friendship and new bonds can be created. And I'm happy that we can be the starting one of forgetting the past, May Tarumi, he said. As he held his hand out, she took his hand. Yes, I'm glad that we can, Naruto Uchiha, as the both of them gaze into each other's eyes as they talk. It might seem to be a flirting session, but it was not. May was a master at politics in these ways. It wasn't even just about her beauty and her seductiveness. Her mind was a rather deadly place to be. She could strip you apart with just her words alone and find out what makes you tick inside. However, she had to give it to this man. Everything was guarded. However, it was also wide open for her to see his intentions. His mind was calculated, smart and quick. She had to say their talk, keep her on her toes. And it was also truly delightful. Naruto was thinking the same thing, knowing that he had to deal with politics once. He had took control. He had studied for years. He had engrossed himself to learning everything that he needed to, to make sure that he was ready for when they were finally able to make a move. So yes, he was prepared. And this woman, she was deadly. Time skip. It was a rather large table. Itachi. And Urza was sitting beside Naruto. May had a few people in there as well. And they were discussing the upcoming plans. The other, Uzumakis and Uchiha's, were a seat around the table. 
as they were listening to me. She was informing them about Yagra, taking a trip. Their inside source was able to get them. This was the only chance they got, the only opportunity. May did not want a war that would destroy the village. After all, it was something that she desired to run. She did not want a chaotic war that would end up killing thousands. That would just hurt Kiri in the long run. She wanted to catch Yagra off guard, surprise, outside of said village, and there they could take him down. As Naruto and the others sat down and listened to her plan and how she wanted to set it out, May made a rough estimate of their strength. Including Naruto's, however, when he told him that he could take on Yagra by himself, many, well, some were surprised. Those being the Kira ninjas, they knew the wrath of their Mizukage, being the perfect Jinjuliki. None of the Uzumaki, nor the Uchiyas, seemed surprised in the slightest, despite Yagra being a perfect tail beast. They did not seem surprised. Two of the Uzumakis were not here to fight. They were here to seal the tail beast after the battle was finished. They couldn't allow it to be killed and reformed that will take years. So they spent the next few hours discussing their plan and what they would do. Later that night, we found Naruto and Mei inside of her quarters. The both of them were drinking. He came here so they could discuss a few things and May had pulled out a bottle of sake for them to talk and relax at the same time. As the both of them talk, their words was filled with a lot of flirting as they did. The both of them seemed to have similar ways of talking when they speak to one another. Walking by the tent outside was Urza. Itachi appeared beside her as they walk. She did not say anything to him. He was the one to ask her, are you okay? Itachi knew something that no one else knew. Urza was able to hide it well. However, she was crushing on Naruto hard, extremely so. In the past, Naruto had met and spoken to many gorgeous, insanely beautiful women. Koyoki, Kazahana being one of them. That was when Itachi found out as he saw the signs that she was able to hide so well. However, Naruto saw Urza as a close friend, a best friend, someone that helped him reach what he desired, someone that stood by his side as a friend in need. But she did not seem like that. At first it was friendship but over the years, it developed into something much more for her. But he did not see her like that. Itachi wanted to do something but she told him not to. Naruto had a lot on his shoulders running the village, forming new allies between them, keeping everything alright, keeping their people happy. He did not seem like he wanted a relationship because he has not been in one. There has been few girls but he's not been in anything long term. However, Itachi believed that she was allowing time to pass by too much. If he never took the chance, he wouldn't be happy right now with someone that he, well, he said it to himself, he loved her. Yes, he loved Izumi. Strangely though, he has not told her that. He should have said it by now, he believe. You know, Itachi says he walked with her. If you don't say something, he will never know. She still did not say anything as he continued to speak. In his mind, you're one of his bestest friends. That's just it, Itachi, she said, finally speaking. What if I say something and that is all he see me as, a friend, and I end up ruining things? It's gonna be awkward and strange after that. Itachi looked at her. I don't think so, he said. Yes, you might see him with the occasional girls by his side, but... With what you and him have been through, 
I know that he cares for you deeply, but he's just not allowing himself to see that. So I really think that you should say something, or at least allow me to know, she said. If anyone's going to do anything, it's going to be me, she said to him. Itachi nodded. He respected her wishes and he had not said anything. And he still will. Time skip. A few days later, Yagra was marching through. He was surrounded by his elite envoys. These were the best of the best. As they were going, making their way. Meanwhile, a distance away. An Uzumaki had his hand plastered on the ground. His eyes were closed. Something is wrong, he said. Gazing up, there was me, Terumi. Beside her was Ao. Itachi was standing there as well. What is it? Itachi asked. The Uzumaki looked forward. There is something messing with my senses. On Yagra, she asked. No. Below him. I can't sense anything below. I think there are seals placed in the ground. Ao said May. Ao activate his hidden Byakugan and scan the area. He's right. I can't see anything past. Their footwear. Something is blocking me from seeing down below. Do you think it's a trap? May asks. More than likely, the Uzumaki said. Something is not right here. They're up to something. We can't afford to draw back now, she said. We've already come this far. Akoji, she said. Turning towards the green haired man behind her. He was from a special clan that allowed him and his clan members to share information from long distances straight to their mind. Which he did with his sister on the other side, who quickly relayed the other members. Standing there was Naruto and the others. His arms folded. Right beside him was Urza. He got the information as he asked. What does she want us to do? The message was sent back. Tell him that most of them are being forced to do this. We just have to get Yagra out of the picture. But we can't afford to waste time. We have to do this. The message was sent back as Naruto agreed. With that he started to walk forward. Making his way. There was a small little hill. Yagra and his man came to a stop. They knew that he was there of course. They could feel him by now. He had a few sensors on the team. Naruto stood there waiting. As they approach. Yagra stopped as he glanced up. His gaze fixated on Naruto for a long while. I know that face he said. You're the red dragon. The grandson of that man, Uchiha Madara. What are you doing here? He asks. Naruto gaze fixated on him. Before Naruto could say anything, Yagra started to laugh. The laugh did not sound right. You know, I heard the rumors about you and your people, the remaining Uchiyas. <laughs> and those Makis rising. Given the past aggression that that clan had with this village. I'm surprised. You're here helping the rebellion forces, is that not? You don't seem surprised as you speak though, said Naruto. Because I'm not. I know that wretched woman was planning on making a move very soon. But she should know by now that I'm always 10 steps ahead of her. And now that she's finally here, he said, gazing over towards the other side, I can finally end her life and stop this nonsense. She might have gathered a large number of forces, but this battle would have always ended in my victory. Those bloodline demons would have always fall, he said. He flashed you hand sign as he pushed his hand forward and fired something into the ground. It was followed by an explosion. That is when Naruto saw the seals. Special seals that seem to have been there for some time now. There was an underground passageway. And several. Several dozen ninjas started to break formations out of it. 
Over to the other side, there was another the explosion. Naruto glanced back as Urza quickly approached him. The numbers are more than we expected, she said. I know, said Naruto. Yagra was now surrounded by his men. Where is she? Tell me, is she gonna run away from this battle? As her cowardly friends has run away in the past. Or is she gonna stand and fight? Over to the side, me and her people finally stepped out. There was no more point of hiding. This is where it end. This is where they stand their last stand. Yagara smiled at that. Naruto did not seem bothered in the slightest given the numbers. You know, he said as he started to walk down the hill. With these numbers, it would have been rather dreadful for her and her people. If this was the case... However, you're not putting in one thing that will change the outcome here. And what is that, said Yagra. Me and my people, said Naruto. Tch, Yagra pulled his staff as he twirled it and slammed it into the ground. Take one more step and I won't be blamed for what happened to you, he said to him. There is still time to flee this place right now. I have no quarrel with you, unfortunately. I can't do that. Naruto glanced behind him. Back up me and the others. What about you? Well, you did say that you wanted to see. What I was truly capable of, did you not? Urza looked at him. She could feel the raw confidence just leaking from him. Knowing that he had this. She turned to the people. Alright, move, she said. They did not question what she said. As the Uzumakis that remain, three of them stand by, while the others move to the other side, the Uchiha's following them, Sharingan spring into life. Itachi stood by Mei's side. Right now Yagura army was surrounded but they had more numbers, but that did not matter though. The large portion that stood with Yagura including all of his envoys, stood face to face with Naruto. Their eyes met as Naruto started to walk. Before he started to run, he's coming. Prepare yourself. Take him down, said Yagra. All of his men shot forward. The moment the impact was made, bodies were thrown. As Naruto was in mid-ear, his feet was placed in a guy's chest. His other feet was extended in a guy's throat. He kicked the both of them away before he reached and grabbed the blade with his beer hand. He grabbed it in a way that he did not even mark his skin. He slammed his heel in the guy's face, snapping his head back. He grabbed his body and ripped off his vest, using it to block several shurikens and kunais. He then threw said vest. The ninja scattered as it exploded. Naruto appeared behind three of them. Several powerful hits in the span of a second. Bodies were dropped. A ninja rushed towards him swinging a blade. Naruto ducked. Before he kicked the guy's hand. Snapped his wrist and snapped his head to the side with a kick. His body dropped unconscious. Naruto ducked. Dodging several shurikens as he reached. And put his finger in the loop of one. He threw it. Knocking the shuriken out of the other guy's hand. He then flipped over several water bullets. While in mid-ear, he flashed two hand signs. Fire style, he said. Raging flames. He blasted the ground with an obscene amount of red flames that blocked everyone's vision. Yagra heard chaos in the smoke. Bodies were dropping, bodies were being thrown. It was pure chaotic. Naruto burst out of the smoke, taking down four people as he did in the span of just minutes. Fifty ninjas were brought to their knees. Majority of them were unconscious, some of them dead. Naruto had kept his promise to not just straight right slaughter all of them. That is why he had not even pulled his blades yet. As he ran right into the chaotic group head first. Over to the other side, Mei leaped away, flashing through hand sign as she did. 
as she exhaled steam from her mouth, forcing said ninja's back. Itachi ducked under a few strikes before he spun, knocking away several kunais. A well-placed hit to the stomach and sternum, taking down individuals all around him. Chains shot out and grabbed onto several hearing ninjas. Slamming their skulls together, Urza came dropping in the back of field. The greatest thing that she possessed was her extreme strength. Her feet ripped the entire earth apart, kicking up dust and stone. She stepped forward and punched a guy right in his chest. He took down several of his own colleagues as his body was thrown. She spun and backhanded a girl. She was sent over the head of several others. She dodged and weaved. Every single punch that connected sent someone to the ground unconscious. Bodies were thrown. She slammed both hands into the ground, molding it with chakra. As she gripped said ground like it was an extension and whipped it outwards. Earth whips started to slam through several ninjas, taking them down one after another. The two Uzumakis who were on the battlefield went through hand sign. They created massive barriers that captured ninjas and drained their chakra dry. The fight, despite the numbers that Yagra brought, they were wickering down. Urza glanced over as she saw. She was shocked. Yagra number was so thin, she could see right through them. Back with Naruto. He was now standing as he brushed off his clothing. He was completely unharmed. Behind him was an untold number of bodies, groaning in pain, some of them unresponsive, broken and battered. Naruto stood there. Yagra was baffled. His ten men had not moved. Yes, they had kept him surrounded. His ten elite. Yagra clenched his fists, shocked that his people were so weak to be taken down by one person. Kill him, he roared. The ten of them flashed forward. Naruto, I suddenly activated for the first time, showing that three told them Sharingan. They start to track and move. Naruto duck and weave and dodge. Moving every part of his body that were going to get injured. When he came back around, two of the Anvus found themselves gutted by his punch. It seemed to have reverberated through their back. Naruto twist as he grabbed the guy by his neck and yanked him forward. He interlocked his fingers with the guy's hand and went through hand sign before he grabbed the guy as a shield and blew. Flames behind him. He flipped with the individual. He then tossed him and kicked him as he did as he crashed into his own comrade. While he was in mid-air, he released several flame bullets that hit the ground with a boom. Ninjas were forced to flee and leap to the sky. In mid-air, one of them were backhanded through, crashing down hard. Another one spun as his eyes made contact with Naruto's. His entire body froze as Naruto grabbed his neck. Another ninja came swinging. Naruto ducked and slammed the guy's head right into the other one's stomach. He then spun and kicked him in the face, launching him away, still holding on to the guy's throat. He used his body as a shield to block the several kunas and shurikens. Three of them jumped away as they flashed through hand sign. An enormous dragon made from water shot towards Naruto with its glowing yellow eyes. Naruto released said body. As he jumped up in the sky, flashing through Hansine as he did, he belched out a massive flame that twisted into a dragon, a red dragon with hungry looking eyes. It crashed right into the water dragon and burned right through it. The ninjas scream as the thing exploded upon contact, launching them away. That is when Naruto duck, the hook staff of Yagra. Yagra brought his knee up as Naruto slapped it down before he punched the man in the chest. Yagra staggered but his staff kept him grounded as he lashed out his leg. Naruto caught it and pulled him down and knee him right in the face, throwing him back as he bounced across the ground. One of the ninjas came swinging as Naruto pulled his waist back. Grabbing the guy's arm, he used his own blade to slam 
right into his skull. The body dropped bleeding out. Another one tried to hold Naruto from behind. Naruto slammed his elbow right in his face and grabbed his arm. He lifted him off the ground before spinning and slamming him into the earth. Breaking several bones, collapsing lungs in the process. Two came running forward, their arms extended, blades in their other hands. Naruto flipped. He twisted his head, grabbing the first guy by the shirt and launched him right into his own partner before he spun and kicked him in the back of the skull. Their heads connected so hard the both of them collapsed. Naruto jumped out of the way, dodging several deadly bullets made from water that tore the ground as cinder. Naruto watched as Yagra came rushing forward as he rushed forward. The both of them clashed. And it was obvious Yagra stood no chance. Naruto blurred through hand sign. Once again he released a gigantic red ball of flames. Yagra created a mirror that completely reflected Naruto's attack as it hit together, creating steam. Naruto burst out of the earth behind Yagra. He spun Naruto kick and broke his staff in half. He then stomped into Yagra's chest. He did not let him fly though as he grabbed his leg and lifted him and slammed him in the earth. He then kicked him across the face launched him away. As Naruto crashed right into his face. Tearing him across the ground as he did. Before grabbing him by the throat. Naruto gave him 15 punches in the span of a few seconds. Before backhanding him away. Yagra hit the ground hard as he was sent sailing before he crashed. As Naruto, Sharingan eyes watched him carefully. Yagra picked himself up, coughing up blood. He was angry. As he was now seeing the force that this damn person possessed. He was pissed off. He quickly started to draw upon that power. As the battle paused over the other side, which was already coming to an end. The Sharingan eyes of Itachi glanced over, so was Urza glancing over as well. Yagra was pissed. I'm gonna kill you all, he said. He's gonna turn them all into dust. Even his own comrades, they fail him. His own subordinates, how could they lose that easily? He started to transform. He seemed to be losing his mind, in rage. Everyone felt the powerful. Immense power of the three tails emerged. Damn it, said me. She glanced over towards Itachi. Do not worry, he said. The utmost confidence he had in Naruto. He'll be fine. We just have to get out of here, he said to her. Now, he said, knowing how chaotic the battle was going to become. Naruto stood there as Yagra was completely transformed. He did not budge though, as the tail beast roared, shaking the place. Naruto reached up, however he was smiling, which was uncommon given the beast that he was facing. I had made a promise, he said, talking to himself. He went through hand sign as he did, summoning Jutsu as he brought his hand down, poof. May eyes widen in shock. All of the Kira ninjas, even Yagra who was transformed, was baffled at what Naruto summoned. But guys, be and subscribe right here. If you want to see next parts and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in your social media platform. But I'm off for now. See you guys soon. Peace.